My name is Anisha Malde and I'm a developer evangelist here at Amazon. And today I'm going to be covering a tutorial on how to integrate the new A3L SDK. Here at Amazon, our aim is to make it easier for apps and games developers globally to reduce porting and maintenance efforts between Amazon App Store and third-party app stores. We are excited to announce our new A3L SDK to help with this. The first release of the A3L SDK is an App Store independent abstraction library for cloud messaging, which you can use to send messages to your app. So why should you as a developer start using A3L? Firstly, you will consume the A3L SDK instead of App Store based SDKs, as the A3L SDK will act as a wrapper to App Store or OS based SDKs, which means you will write code once and use the same code on Amazon App Store and third party app stores. Additionally, the A3L Messaging SDK supports Android as well as Fire OS devices by providing a common interface that allows you to create one implementation while it handles the solution-specific details, thus reducing the effort it takes to port and maintain your code. The following table shows the features offered in A3L Messaging SDK as compared to Fire Cloud Messaging FCM and Amazon Device Messaging ADM. The green shows features supported on Android devices and the black shows features supported on Fire OS devices. For example, with A3L messaging, you can send push notifications to engage with your users or send custom data messages to be processed by your app. So how do we actually get started with implementing the A3L messaging SDK? A3L messaging depends on individual messaging solutions for message delivery. Therefore, you must get both Google and Amazon provided credentials. For ADM, first obtain credentials and then add an API key to your project. For more information on how to do this, you can check out the link on screen, which you can also find in the description below. For SCM, first create a Firebase project and register your app with Firebase. After obtaining a Google Services JSON configuration file, add the file to your project and be sure to mention the class path to your build Gradle file. Next, you will need to add the A3L messaging as a dependency. There are a couple steps you will need to follow to do this. First, download the A3L messaging SDK, whose link can be found on the developer portal under SDK downloads or in the description below. Then, add the AAR file into your project's libs folder. This can be done through Android Studio from the project pane. Select Project View and expand the App folder. Create a libs folder if it doesn't exist and add the A3L messaging AAR to the libs folder. Next, you will need to add the A3L messaging and Firebase as dependencies in your project's build Gradle file by adding the following lines of code. And finally, sync your project by selecting Sync Now at the top of your build Gradle file. Now that you've implemented the SDK, how do you integrate it with your project? The first step is to extend from the A3L Messaging Service class, which is part of the A3L Messaging SDK. This allows your app to receive messages. You will need to override two methods in your implementation. On message received called, which is when a message is delivered to your app instance, and on new token called, which is when a device ID for the app instance is ready. The following code shows an example of the implementation with a class named My A3L Messaging Service. Next, you must update your app's Android Manifest XML file to receive messages. You will need to declare your implementation of the A3L Messaging Service class as a receiver, as this allows you to handle registration and message intents. The following example uses My A3L Messaging Service as a placeholder for your implementation of the A3L Messaging Service class. And finally, in the onCreate method, you must initialize A3L messaging and retrieve the device ID. This is important as to test sending a notification, you need the device ID of the device where you installed your app. To initialize, create an instance of the abstract class on init callback and pass it the A3L messaging.init method as seen in the following example. I recommend pausing the video here to have a closer look at the code. Now that you've implemented and integrated the SDK, you're probably wondering how you can test your app. Well, 
You can do so in one of three ways. The first one is by sending a test message through the console. FCM and ADM both have consoles that you can use to send a push notification. To test your integration with ADM, you can access the ADM console through the developer portal and log in if prompted. Once you do this, you will be shown a screen as shown on the video. Select your target app and then enter the client ID and secret for your app. You should have these from when you obtain your credentials for ADM. Then, in the device registration ID field, enter the device ID obtained when initializing A3L messaging. Choose the duration of the message in the message expires after section. And finally, choose the message type and add key value pairs for the notification you want to send. For an exhaustive list of fields and how they map to the Android notifications, you can see the documentation on A3L messaging notification keys, which can be found in the description below. Once you're done adding key value pairs, click send test message. Check for the notification on your device. You can also send custom messages by choosing your own key value pairs. You can choose what to name your keys, but make sure they differ from the A3L messaging notification keys types. You must handle custom messages in the on message received method of your implementation of the A3L messaging service class. To test your integration with FCM, you can send a push notification by using the notification composer in the Firebase console. Once you're in the Firebase console, you should see a screen as shown. Select the project for which you want to send a test push notification. And then on the left sidebar, expand the engage section and select cloud messaging. Then click new notification and enter your message in the notification text field. You can optionally fill in the notification title image or name fields too. Once you are done, click send test message in the device preview section. In the overlay, enter your device ID in the add FCM registration token field. Your device ID was obtained in the initializing A3L messaging section. Click test and your app should receive the push notification. The other two ways you can test is by either using server-side scripts or solution-specific APIs. The following server-side scripts allow you to send notifications to a device. ADM Web Server is a Python script that sends a notification to a Fire OS device, whereas FCM Web Server is a Python script that sends a notification to an Android device. To send a test notification, copy the code, paste it into an editor, and update the values in the comments. Then save each as a PY file and run the scripts. The second way, which is to test with a solution-specific API. Both FCM and ADM provide APIs that you can use to send messages to your devices. For detailed instructions on how to send a message through those APIs, you can use the link on screen, which you can also find in the description below. And finally, I want to cover how to troubleshoot your A3L notifications. All A3L messaging notification keys append a prefix of a3l.notification before the base field name. This prefix helps to avoid collision with the Android notification keys which have similar field names. A3L messaging notification fields behave the same as corresponding Android notification fields. The data type and functionality of the fields are the same. The following table shows some of the A3L messaging notification fields and the Android corresponding notification field. An extensive list can also be found in the documentation. So that's it from me today. Thank you for your time. I hope this video was useful in understanding how to implement the new A3L SDK, and I hope that you include it in your app. For more information, you can check out the link on screen. You can also find the links I spoke about in this video in the description below. To discover more, head over to developer.amazon.com or join us on Twitch at Amazon App Dev every Tuesday at 6pm GMT. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.